Uh, way back here at the end of March, I did a video where I theorized that we would um, possibly get a V recovery uh, from this sell-off. Uh, and I know, you know I've been watching a lot of the YouTube videos and and we have seen analysts calling the top all the way up. And what in fact has played out is we've got one of the most, most violent V recoveries uh, ever. Um, I, in my, I believe it was either the last video or the one before that, I... I um I noted that the employment report was a possible trigger event that could uh, maybe um, turn stocks back down into a daily cycle low. We are getting really mature in the daily cycle, but my um, my expectation was uh, that the more likely scenario would be for uh, stocks to drop into that uh, that trigger event and then bottom. On the bad employment report, but but they uh, clearly they did not do that. Uh, they were uh, moving up into the report employment report. So uh, the, at that point, then the odds became better that maybe the employment report dampened enthusiasm and and that we get some profit taking and uh, we move down into the daily cycle low. But that didn't happen either. The market rallied uh, on the employment report, and I mentioned this before that we had a gap right here and that there was a, a possibility that that gap could fill uh, before this uh, daily cycle topped and and that's uh, starting to look likely at this point you can see the um, nasdaq 100 has uh, is, is starting to push into uh, this gap uh so uh, at this point um i think the um next possible uh, um, trigger or resistance zone that might uh, cause the market to top and, and uh, uh, start a corrective move into the daily cycle low might be a technical level, which would be this 200-day uh, moving average. And I'm starting to see um, people, um, you know, planning on placing big short positions at this resistance level. And I'm going to say right now, I, I don't think that's a great idea. Um, central banks are pumping literally trillions uh, of dollars and euros and yen into uh, financial markets. And um, in the past, anyway, that has often resulted in stretched cycles uh, and cycles that can uh, continue uh, rallying much longer than they would um, normally. Uh, so, you know, if we were in a, in a normal market, uh, I would say you could almost bet the farm that, and especially considering that we're now into 30 plus days of this daily cycle, and most um, daily cycles will, will bottom around day 35 to 38. Sometimes it can stretch into the low 40s, but, um, you know, even so, you should have a top uh, in the... Uh, uh, you know, in the in the 30s, you should get a top to the cycle and then a, you know, move down that can last anywhere from three to eight days uh, down into the final daily cycle low. But uh, during periods of extreme uh, quantitative easing, I've seen these cycles stretch, you know, out as far as 50 plus days, and you don't actually get the top of the cycle, you know, until uh, long after the cycle would normally have bottomed. Um, so while I think this is the potential for the cycle to top and then move down into a corrective um, bottom that would give us you know, our next buying opportunity, I don't think it's a wise idea to, to short the market at this 200-day uh, moving average because it, it may just not stop uh, at that level. It could go uh, right through that. Um, the next real resistance zone would be maybe somewhere here around 3,100, and and it's uh, um, definitely conceivable that uh, you know if, if a lot of people start shorting here at the 200-day moving average, and then the the market doesn't turn back down, but instead blasts through that, uh, those shorts are going to have to cover, and, and that could add more fuel to the rally. So. Um, my my advice would be not to try and short this rally period uh, at this point and just wait. Uh, you know, you can 
I, I would give my blessing to taking profits, you know, if, if you've been long this whole time. Um, and, and I think in one of my last videos, I noted a p potential strategy would be to go go long right in here and then just put a stop underneath uh, this um, little pivot. And if, if that stop got, or if that pivot was taken out, then you would have confirmation that the market's moving down into its daily cycle low. Well, so far that, of course, has not happened. So anybody that is using that strategy and got long right in here, uh, you've got, you know, a decent profit here and you've got your protective stop right below, uh, oh, I think this is a little below 2800, 2796, if I remember correctly. Um, you got your protective stop right here to uh, to protect your position. And, and if you want to take profits on the tag of the 200-day moving average, uh, that I would be uh, completely in um, in agreement with. Uh, nothing wrong with that. And if it, it continues to go uh, through the 200-day moving average, um, you haven't lost anything. You, you booked some profits, you know. Um, but I, I do not think it's a wise idea to, to short at the 200-day moving average in anticipation that, that you've got, you know, a, a free ticket to make some money on the short side. And, and even, you know, if, well, even when we do get a, a corrective move down into the daily cycle low, whether it starts at the 200-day moving average or whether, you know, it goes through that and it starts, you know, sometime later in May, um, still with, uh, like I said, with central banks just throwing you know, unimaginable amounts of quantitative easing at markets, it's likely to be very, uh, very mild correction anyway. So uh, probably pretty hard to uh, make any money on the downside uh, trying to short uh, a rally this powerful and with this much you know, free money uh, behind it. Uh, I think you're better off, you know, take profits whenever you're comfortable, whenever you feel like you've made enough money and then Whenever we do get a, a corrective move, whether it you know be this week, next week, or two or three weeks from now, then that would be your opportunity to to buy back your positions, and then uh, at that point you would be um, early in the next daily cycle. So instead of being 30 plus days into a daily cycle with risk of at some point the market moving down into a daily cycle low and you giving back some of your profits you could get in on maybe day one or two and, and have a, a lot more upside potential. And uh, and the way this is going, uh, you know, the S&P may retest the highs. Um, the, uh, the NASDAQ, on the other hand, and especially the NASDAQ 100, I think is um, very likely to retest these all-time highs before this intermediate cycle tops, not necessarily the daily cycle here. Um, I suspect we're going to get a, a corrective move uh, before we can test these all-time highs, but then I think we're going to have another leg up, and I think uh, there's very strong possibility that the NASDAQ, and especially the NASDAQ 100, will test the, uh, the February highs before the intermediate cycle tops, maybe uh, sometime in uh, mid to late June.